Okay, I wanted to go through a couple of things on uh, wax work and um, cleaning up waxes, attaching things with heat, and um, how to start adding your sprues to your piece. So for the particular pieces that um, we've been working on, we've been carving um, basically relief work uh, with small small pieces of this um, blue wax or it doesn't really matter the cover color but uh, I mean it, it does <laughs> they will uh, they'll all have different properties but we've also been using um, this quarter inch thick green um, you know some of them are a little bit better for carving some are better for chipping some are better for um, just all purpose and they're malleable so I use the blue a lot just because you can do just about anything with it um, so I have my little man here that um, I actually just broke his legs off. Um, so I need to be able to fuse his legs back on. So I'd like to show that. So um, I have a wax pin um, that uh, is set up to um, kind of a, a heating dial over here. And I have my, my dial at about three o'clock. Um, I want it hot, but I don't really need it to be, you know, smoking. Um, I just want to get a really good fuse. So, uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of set myself up, make sure that I'll be able to stay in that location once it fuses. Because like soldering, and um, sometimes I'm just going to need to just be able to hold still for a second. So, um, I'm setting up like a little, you know, something underneath here so it sits it at the right size. That'll work. Okay. And so then at some point, I just need to be bold and go for it. And that's not on right. It's kind of hard to do whenever I can't see it. Let's center it. I usually would be right over the top of this, obviously, but I want you to be able to see it too. So. I want to make sure that I have a good fuse. I also don't want to have to do a ton of work with my wax pen because um, I still have to clean up all these edges that I make so that his little feet look good. Sometimes I might need just a little extra wax depending on how I fuse. And so for that, I'm just grabbing a little um, piece in building up some wax from it. So a lot of times whenever I'm um, using a wax pen or even a dental tool that I heat it up with a lamp, uh, a lot of times I'm just going to use gravity to kind of do my work for me. And the tricky part is that you do really want to, once you're done um, doing any hot work, you really want to let it cool. It's a good idea to let it cool all the way and not put it in a refrigerator or something like that. But if it's your work, you can do whatever you want. Just know that it's going to um, compromise the wax. So. I'm going to leave that one to cool just a little bit. I have a towel under my desk and often I wipe off my hot tool so that I don't have a bunch of excess. And um, I just kind of touched the top of that too because there were little parts that I could clean up just with the heat. And even though I said I'm not going to do anything else on it, you know me, I can't help myself. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so I just check it out, make sure that it's straight and it's how I want it. Uh, ideally, I'm going to leave it to just kind of sit for a second and getting off any of the excess that didn't need to be over here. Um, I will address the um, legs. 
again soon. And um, if I can get it off whenever it's soft, I'm still, I'm gonna do it. I can't follow my own advice. Okay, so I've got my legs on, and now we need to think about um, how to spruce. So I've also been working on this little dog. Um, I still have some, I still have some more carving that I need to do, and then I'm also going to be carving out the back in order to reduce weight, and so I have a little bit of time there. But um, so as far as talking about how to sprue. This is, these are sometimes a little bit tricky. Um, I have a couple that are already finished and basically what you want to think about is you want the metal to be able to flow in and then you don't want it to ever backflow, which means that if I was looking at this particular piece, I want the metal to go in and just kind of keep going down and down and down. And so on this particular one, I do have metal that's flowing down and then um, it does have to go out and then kind of back down, but it's all pretty much just going going straight down. On this particular one, you can see that I put it on an angle um, and that is so that the metal can fall into that kind of big umbrella, falls down the neck of the piece and then it goes into the body and into the legs. And I did ask it to do a little bit of work by going straight out um, as well. But um, if these were pointed, if these were pointed up like this, the arms, it would be harder because that would be backflow, and so I'd have to make some different decisions. So um, these are all pretty simple because they're all relief, and I'm also hoping to make multiples. So a lot of times, I'm spruing in a way that um, I can also put directly into the mold. So you'll see this one's a bit different. Um, and because I had this propeller out on the side, I was a little bit worried about putting the sprue anywhere down here. I could have like attached it to the brick and to the propeller and put like two sprues down here and then it would have all flowed really well. The only reason why I didn't do that is because this propeller was actually sculpted really well and I knew that it would be hard to get a sprue off of that and get it the, back the way I wanted it in metal. And so I put it on the big kind of bulky part of the body here um, so that I can cut that sprue off and then just kind of use some sanding disc to, to get it off of the body of the material. But um, you can also see that the back of it is hollowed out to reduce some weight, but you can see how that really works metal-wise. The metal flows in, it goes into this brick, goes through the legs, also goes into the fat part of the body, you know, flows through here and then it flows down like that. So there's just like no, nothing really that, that back flows. And I probably put it in pretty horizontal so that this goes in like this. There were a lot of different ways to do this sprueing. Um, that's just kind of where I landed. So let's go ahead and show how to sprue the one that we were just working on. Um, and I will uh, go ahead and give just a tiny bit of review about how, how to clean these things up. Um, there's kind of always a debate over uh, whether you can use sandpaper, or whether you should or not. And generally, uh, I've never had any trouble with the um, sandpaper getting embedded in my wax, but I think that would be the only real concern. Um, a lot of the times I'm using, I had used the wax files to form this whole thing, but I'm also using um, one set of metal files that I have committed to being for wax, and that's because I really like using that safe edge file. And so I use my safe edge file a lot. That's so that it doesn't bite into the sides of a place where I don't want it to be. Um, so I can do some cleanup like that. I like to use 400 sandpaper as a start, um, and hopefully I can get the piece as smooth as I want by using um, carving tools and uh, files but I'm gonna use 400 sandpaper. I also like to use this um, micro sanding paper, the ultra fine sandpaper for the, uh, the, that is like foamy. So I use this a lot as well. And so I would address my whole piece and this would have happened beforehand. Um, and then it would also happen uh, right before I do my spruing. And there might be a tiny bit of cleanup after you sprue as well. So. Uh, and then the final, the final finish for the piece is um, often using a piece of denim. Um, 
jeans uh, or uh, pantyhose are good. Um, but you'll you you just can kind of quickly see that if I rub, I have to be careful with my piece because there's those legs are still volatile. If I rub that material, oh, another part fell off. If I rub that material, it comes off really well. I kind of find it as a good thing whenever things fall off so that they don't fall off while they're in the flask. So I'm going to go ahead and sprue this. I will have a little bit of cleanup to do later. So I'm going to set it up. I'm going to put something behind it so that it doesn't move. And then I'm going to fuse really close to where the legs are. I'm going to hold it there for a second. That's a good way to make sure that it's fused, just like if you were soldering. I'm going to hold it on this side, just so that the weight is right. And then I'm going to cut this one off here. So in order to put on the next sprue, I'm going to come in at a little bit of an angle. Heat my piece, and there we are. And I really want to make sure that it's fused all the way around. I like to see a change of color in between those two different waxes, and so you can see that it kind of turned navy blue for a second. That's what I really want to be able to see. And while it's all hot and still easy to move, I'm going to go ahead and cut this little guy down and I'm going to attach, my hands are in the way I know, I'm going to attach the center. So now that sprue is attached, I went ahead and used two legs on this one similar to the other ones, mainly because I want that to follow up um, through the little sled that he's standing on and then up into his two legs. So I could probably get away with just having one big one and maybe a little reservoir, but this this seems like this is gonna be a better, better choice here. So I let that all cool really well. And then I'm gonna do my final, final, final uh, cleanup. If I need to use wax clean, I can also do that as, as a final method to make sure that that um, piece looks really clean. Remember that if you use wax clean, um, use it at the very, uh, at near the end, especially if you're doing geometric things because um, it can soften the edges a little bit. So um, I, I use that sparingly if I use it, but I still have a little bit of cleanup on his legs and I might just have to get some sandpaper in there to just um, clean up those transitions of his legs. But there we have it. So this one is sprued and ready to go. And um, I have left it with enough of a stem so that I can attach it to a larger tree so that I can do uh, a couple more. And I mentioned the dog, after I'm finished with the dog, I do have some challenges with how to sprue him because his nose and tail are sticking out. So I'm gonna have to kind of figure out um, how I wanna do that. Most likely I'll sprue from the back and maybe sprue from the back of his head and it'll just have like the tiniest bit of backflow to get to his nose um, or if I angle it a little bit more like um, you know more like this you know then it'll it'll have a way to get um, you know to his to his head and his nose and then go off the body so that's it for now stay tuned for metal <laughs>